is with Miss Mamie Campbell. Today is March the 26th, 2007, and we are at her home. Miss Campbell, we appreciate so much your letting us come and interview you for the Marshall Museum. Uh, you are 93 years old, and you have lived here most of your life. So uh, I want to would like, first of all, to ask you about, I know that you were born in South Carolina, so how did you end up in Mooresville? How did you come to Mooresville? To live with my only sister, Louise. Okay, and is that how is that when you met Mr. Campbell? Yes. Okay, and how did you how did you and Mr. McCampbell meet? Do you remember? Yes, we met down at the Presbyterian Church. They had a little building down there, down the Presbyterian Church. We was down there, uh, program some kind of some kind. He asked to take me home, and he kept me. He kept me. <laughs> He must have liked you. <laughs> <laughs> and how old were you then? I was, I was about 16 16. You were about 16 when you got married? Yeah. Okay. And uh, so what did, where did Mr. Campbell, what was, was Mr. Campbell working at that time? He was working for Johnson. Johnson's Coal and Oil? Yeah. And, and what did he do there? I reckon he had it all in the I don't know what they do down there, but I know they, you know, they had the hand and ice that took. They manufactured, they made, made ice. Yes, and, and they, they would they take it out. imported coal, came in in coal cars. Yes. And he probably helped deliver ice. Yes, he did help in the ice. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he drove the wagon that they, that delivered the ice. Did they have a wagon or was it no club? Well, it was maybe a, at the beginning it was a wagon, yeah. but later there were trucks. Trucks, well, that's when he was. He was dr okay, so he drove the ice truck mm -hmm. all around Mooresville. Okay, and did did you go to work at that time, or did you uh, just stay at home and take care of the house? I worked. You and where did you work? I worked for Johnson. That's the first job I had when I came. But for Ms. Ross Johnston? Yes. Okay, so you worked in, as, a, as a housekeeper in yes. her house. Okay. All right. Then, of course, you had two children. And later on. Later on, <laughs> right. And um, so, and, but you also, at, at one point in time, worked as, as you, you caned chairs. You, yes, you, the last job. I, the last job you uh -huh. had. Okay. Well, before that, what did you do? Work for Johnson. You worked for Johnson's? Oh, no, I worked at uh, South School. You worked at South School? Yes, I worked with Greeley. Okay, tell us about that. Oh, it was, it was nice. You know, I just cooked for them. That's what we did. You worked in the cafeteria? Yeah, and who was in charge of the cafeteria? Miss uh, uh, Davis. What's her name? Davidson. Yeah. Miss Jane Davidson? No, no. Elizabeth Davidson. 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 You were there when it opened? Yeah, when it started. I was one of, one of the first ones. Because mm -hmm. yeah. the it, cafeteria wasn't built until quite a long, I mean, I can remember, it was built after I graduated from South School. Yeah. Oh, okay. It was not there in the, beginning. In the original South School. No, I don't, we went home for lunch. Yeah, I don't know how long, you know, mm -hmm. I, I just know when you opened the cafeteria, Miss mm -hmm. Greeny was... She was still there. Superintendent or something, and Miss Davis was over the cafeteria. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then, and so, the, but after you left the school, then you, that's when you went to work in the, the chair co company, uh, caning chairs. Yeah. Was that something that you had learned before, or yeah. did you know? They taught you how to do it when you went to work? Yeah. And hang, can you describe how you did that? <laughs> well, you have to see it, though. You know, the chair is there. And you, you have a cane bottom chair, I don't have one, and you tack, you tack it on two sides and just kind of twist it around until you get to one side and get another side. It's hard to tell how you did it. 
Yeah. Yeah, she's supposed to kill him. But see, it died. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you have to wet the cane before yeah, you... Yeah, it goes down. Mm -hmm. It goes down. Yeah. And it was hard to work. Was it... Uh, the edges were sharp. Yes, it was. So you, you would have to be careful not to cut Very yourself. Careful. Did you also learn to do that very intricate little diamond-shaped cane and tube that would be on real expensive chairs? I don't know about that. All I know is that we would uh, just cover the whole bottom. I wish I had a chair. The whole bottom of the chair. We would tack it on one side and the other, and then we'd just start and just go. And we'd wrap it around the thing that holds the chair together, in the bottom. Mm -hmm. And you just wrap it around that until you get to the bottom, to the middle of it, and then you had to rip, fix it together. Mm -hmm. It's hard to tell how, unless you would see it done. Mm -hmm. How many chairs could you do in a day? Or how long did it take you to do a chair? Well, I don't know, but I did, I think when I stopped, uh, I was doing about seven, eight a day. A day? A day. Wow. Wow. It's not hard. Were you pay on a production? Were you paid by production or you we just, just you had a, a, a straight salary? Mm -hmm. yeah. do, do you know if, 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 that, if anybody still makes those chairs, those kind of chairs? I don't know. I really don't. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, T tell me, you, you, you don't got any more questions? Not about the king chairs. Okay. <laughs> the factory did close that made those chairs. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. What are some of the changes that you have seen in your 93 years of Ooh. life? Tell us about some of the things that... <laughs> yeah, I know, it's a lot, but... It's a whole lot. Well, now, you know, when I was in South Carolina, we had a... We had to go to a spring. It was down. I say in the woods. I don't know. It was to me, it was the woods. <laughs> but you'd go down in there and uh, get the water and have carried back to the house. And uh, we had. We had. Uh, what did we have? I'm sure you must have had an outhouse. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, we had an outhouse, and we had a playhouse too. You know, we made our own uh, rag dolls. We would take something like straw, I don't know, and put it up out of the ground. But it was broom straw. That's what they called it. And we made our that's that was our that's what we had to play with. And we would take broken or broken dishes and things that couldn't be used and, and make a playhouse out of it. And. Uh, I bet you used some moss too. No, didn't, didn't no, use any moss. Didn't use any moss. The moss was there, but we didn't use it. But we would just make something like a playhouse. And uh, then we would uh, go to spring and get the water and bring it up and wash. You know, we had them wash tools, whatever you call them. Mm -hmm. We didn't have no machine. And, uh, our aunt had a little black pots, and she would put fire around it and, and uh, wash the clothes and put them in that and punch them with the stick. And they'd be clean when they got through, and then she'd take them out of that and wash them and rinse them and hang them on the line. And uh, what are some of the things we would do? Did she use blowing? And yes, she was doing it in the water. Uh-huh. Yes, she was doing it in the water. And we had it on the line. And, and you, <coughs> your, your aunt, you, you lived with your aunt because yes. your parents had passed away. Yes. And you were in, living in Columbia. And where did, where, you, where did you go to school? We, we, uh, we went, we, I went to school we, in uh, South Carolina. And then when my aunt moved, to, we, we moved from East Dover. She came, she came to Columbia, mm -hmm. and uh, when we came to Columbia, we went to uh, Booker T. Washington School mm -hmm. in Columbia. In Columbia. Uh-huh. And uh, what else did we do? I can't remember. 
So you then eventually you came to Mooresville to live with your sister. Yes. And then then began the rest of your life. Yes. Yeah. With her. Uh -huh. You mentioned that you met um, Ike at, a, at the Great. Presbyterian Church. Yes. And you did. now go to the Jerusalem Baptist That's Church. Right. And there's a Campbell Baptist yes. Church on the Oh, no, I know that. We first we said that was, we called that a modern church. <laughs> but it's the it's a name of the person, John Chapel. Uh -huh. That uh, used to be the name of the Campbell Baptist yeah. Church? Oh, they have it. just changed that. They have just changed that recently. Changed that we, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, oh, John Chapel. And then uh, we moved. And uh, we built Jerusalem. You know, it was there. We built that. But we see, I'm always past it then. And uh, when he retired, Reverend Keith Gamble took the ocean. Well, was the Presbyterian Church that you attended the the one that's on Broad Street now, yeah. beside the Cotton Gin? Yes. Cotton uh -huh. Gin. That's really right. Well, that's been here. That's one of the older churches. Yes, the older mm -hmm. that's, that's where I met my husband. <laughs> that's a pretty good place to, to meet to someone. Meet him, yes, uh -huh. He took me home. My brother, Fred Murray, I had one brother, and uh, he was going with his girlfriend, and he uh, sent me home with some more girls, and asked, uh, I had to take me home, right walk with us. And I took us home, and my sister and brother with us there, my sister and brother-in-law. And he came back that Sunday, to see Ike. <laughs> he, he wasn't coming to see me. Where did your sister live, Miss Manny? Uh, what part of town? She lived on a White Street. A white, it's a Sharp Street. Sharp Street. Sharp yeah, she worked for Barber. She worked for John Barber. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She worked for John Barber. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You mentioned that you did some work at the Winnie Hooper Senior Center. Yes. What did you do there? Well, we had, uh, when this was open, I was the president of it. Over, you know, I was president there. Well, for those of us who don't know who Winnie Hooper was, tell us about her and why the center is named for her. Well, I, now this is all I would know that she was, uh, she used to be over the center down uh, cooking. I reckon she was over, over just cooking. And when they, you see, we didn't always have the center. Mm -hmm. And uh, when they when they built the center, she was still over. So they need they, that's the name they give it after they built the center. Mm -hmm. And she remained it because she built. It. But many I uh, really did a lot of work, you know. And they, they that that's the reason that she was she, she did a lot of work to try to get the center built. Yes, yeah, she was working with the you know, mm -hmm. because she was. Over, over us. She worked at Dunbar School, I believe. Yes. And in the, I believe she cooked in the cafeteria there. I think she did too. Oh in no. The cafeteria. Okay. And then she started. Well, you have lots of plaques that sh that that show that you've given a lot of service to the Winnie Hooper Center too. There's yes. one up here that says 40 years of service. That's yes. that's wonderful. It was when it was open. That's when I. <laughs> When you started, yeah. What all did you do there? Well, I worked in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. that's, what, that's what I did. Mm -hmm. Did 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 they serve meals mm -hmm. at the center? Yeah, they did the children. Yeah, they did the children there. Oh, uh, now these would would be preschool children that. That were, was their preschool. No, there? my daughter. Well, uh, I really worked with because that's when that's when the, that's when she started school, and uh, that's oh. when she got her diploma the first time yeah. from uh, Dunbar, and then she went to work for, for uh, she went out to San Francisco and worked at the mint where they make money, and uh, she left there and went to New York for my sister. That, that was my oldest daughter. And my baby daughter went to uh, 
sisters, and she retired from there. So both, but both of them started at uh, Dunbar. And to college, Mary Louise, uh, Mary Louise went to uh, Greensboro, I think that's the name. She finished over there. And Helen finished at Raleigh. At, uh, I can't remember anything now, but it's college in Raleigh, Helen. My da oldest daughter finished there, and my youngest daughter finished it done by here. Could the college at Greensboro have been A&T? A&T. A&T. And how about Shaw? Was it Shaw University? Shaw, that yes. In Raleigh, or was it? In Raleigh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In yeah. Raleigh. And my baby daughter, Mary Louise, went to A&T in uh, Greensboro. Greensboro. And which one of the girls died? Helen. Well, uh, she here somewhere. And how and old was she when she died? Seventy-one. Seventy-one. Uh -huh. She but she's still three years. She's the one over there, and she's the one that uh, worked. In, she retired from census. Now she worked for census 32 years. In Washington? Uh huh. Yeah. And she stayed there after she retired? Yes. In, in Maryland, you said? Maryland, up in Mulberry. Uh -huh. Maryland. She's still there. Uh, they had a home there, not they see my husband. Uh -huh. So, Miss Mabel, what do you do with your time now? You're 93 years old. What? Yeah. The? I, I don't know. I just make work, fine work. It's a thing working in this house to do. Mm -hmm. And then I go to uh, the center where they give us dinner lunch. And, you know, mm -hmm. that's, where, yeah. Yeah, that's where I go now. The Council on Aging? Yes. Mm -hmm. and that, from, from church to Council on Aging to working. And that's and I go a lot. <laughs> I don't think you sit around much, do you? No, I don't. Mm -hmm. See, I go all the time. I mean, church or something. something. Well, when you were, when you and Ike were first married, what kind of things did you do for social things? Did Did you have dances? Did you? Yeah, they had something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we used to have a, they used to have a uh, parties, you know, mm -hmm. in homes. Mm -hmm. Didn't have no place else. We had parties at home. So. Mm -hmm. We'd go to states for two. Up there, they had parties up there, but there wasn't much to do. What, was the black community in Mooresville a pretty close knit community? I mean, did, did you you kind of socialize together? Yes, they did. They still do. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. but it wasn't too many, you know. As many as it is now, mm -hmm. but uh, we did. did. Did most of your social life center around family and churches? Yes, that's what we had to center to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. that's, that was the main thing. Your children graduated from Dunbar, so they graduated from school before the schools were integrated. No. Oh, yes. Yes. Yes, yes that's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Do do you have you seen I don't, I wanna do I wanna do this delicately, but I don't know exactly how to word it. With the with the with integration in, in Mooresville, did you did you or anyone you know experience any real difficulties with with that? Experience of, of the, the changeover. The changeover. Well, no, my uh, I had no, I didn't have any. It might have been different, but I wouldn't, I couldn't tell it because it, it was just as nice then. But the children just went together. It was just a big school. Mm -hmm. They started coming together, mm -hmm. and uh, those that had children that was in the transaction. I, I had a grandson that was in the transaction in Albert, but he got along good. Yeah, I had no trouble. The teacher, the teacher loved him, and he was a missing boy, and he loved the teacher. 
Well, okay. did Albert go to Morrisville Senior High, or did he graduate at Dunbar, your, gra your grandson? Well, he uh, went to Morrisville Senior High, and his brother went to New Orleans. And he went to New Orleans, and that's where he graduated from, New Orleans. How old was he when they moved? Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, he was seven, I don't know. But this is him when you move. Uh -huh. Oh, he was young. Yeah, he was a little boy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he went to, went to, um... How old, how old is he now? He's 29 now. I think he's a man. <laughs> <laughs> so now, is he a grandson or a great-grandson? Great grandson. grandson. Uh, uh, and he is the only grandson. Yes, so I had only two girls and one branch and a grandson. <laughs> <laughs> and where does he live now? He lives with me. Oh, he's here? Yeah. Oh, oh. I want you to get married. <laughs> so you can get out. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Somebody asked the rice farm to cook for him. So he still <laughs> live here. Uh -huh. He said he lived here so he, he, he covered with Mama so he can take care of Mama. Uh -huh. so. And Mama would like some privacy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Where does he work? He works for a company. I don't know the name of the company he works for. Him. But it's, uh, it's where they make all those. Plastic cups and oh, uh -huh. what is it? LB plastics. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's where he works now. Well, can you think of anything else that you would like to tell us about? I don't. I just can't think right now. You know. I understand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Miss Mamie, have you done any hand work? Uh, over the years, like making quilts. Yes, make quilts. Do you do you have one of your quilts that you've made? I, the last one I had, my daughter took the uh, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Did you did you crochet or knit? I knit some. I never have learned. I I just sew. I would make. Uh, I made uh, clothes. You know, mm -hmm. not all clothes, but you I made, made a lot of clothes. There's two girls, I bet you had an opportunity to make a lot of clothes. A lot of clothes, yes. yes. I made them shoes and I never could make pants, but I'd make I do something where I always made dresses and things mm -hmm. like that to move them. Yeah. Did you have pets? Did you have dogs or cats or anything? Excuse me. I had I had two dogs and one of them my daughter sent me a third brace them to from uh, Washington. And I had taken them to the, to the vet, you know. And that the, I took them and brought them back home. And somebody stole them the very night. Oh my goodness! I stole them. Oh. I stole them. I had them outside. Somebody stole them, so oh. I wouldn't bother to get another one because. Mm -hmm. And he was he was nice. He was he was a good dog. Mm -hmm. but, well, Miss Mamie, tell us a little bit about Ike. What what? I, what, what, kind, what kind of man was he? Oh, I was, he was a young man, and then when he grew up, he was a church man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was a deacon, a church, he was just, and he liked to help people, you know. He did a good, a lot of helping people, and he used to run. When he started going to, going to church, he would go. Uh, Take the car and go around the town and bring the children to Sunday school. Oh, he, he did that up until as long as he could. And, and he, but when he was put in the railroad, he, uh, he got sick. And they sent him home to rest, you know, but he, he wouldn't rest. So he got sick and went to the hospital. And he came home from the hospital. And uh, he was. He would always pray for a long prayer before breakfast. The children always be <laughs> just shut their eyes. <laughs> when he shut his eyes, he'd give me something to eat. 
and you swallow it before you open his eyes. But he got up this morning, that morning, he'd been sick and we had prayer. And he told me, we was having something to do down the church. And he said, now maybe we can hurry up and go down there because you know you'll be needed. I said, okay. <clears throat> but during the time he did, he told me that, he went in the bedroom and I heard, and Junior, yeah, we call him Junior, he was going up with the scouts. And he asked me to spell something. I said, I don't have time to spell you. And I said, well, that's your papa. And he went on that one. And I heard a funny noise, you know, sound like somebody was drunk. No, and we got hard. And I said, what on earth are they doing in there? Because I know Junior was, uh, we called him the grandson Junior. I said, I know he went in there to get to, I had to spell something for him, and what are they doing? And when I went in there, he had got from the breakfast table, and had went in the bedroom, and had laid down, and uh, I said, I, and he didn't say nothing, and I said, Junior, I should run across the street and tell them, uh, Miss Mabel and them, something happened to Ike. And it was strange to me that he went running over there, and Mabel said he came over there and said, Oh, you all come quick because my granddad is dying. And uh, then he left their house and went up to uh, Lobel Thomas and told them Ike was dying. And I, I, I didn't know he was dying, you know, to me. So I called them, and somebody called them, yes, and they came and picked him up. And when they came to get Ike, they told me, they said, now we don't want you to let the policeman go bring you to the hospital. We don't want you to go with us. There's not no room. I, I don't know. I, it was room enough for me. But they wouldn't let me get in the room, in the hospital, in the room. Ambulance with them, so they went over there and police went. They all had showering and stuff, so when I got to the door, <coughs> Dr. Ron Wren, I think it was Dr. Wren, met me. And uh, the police was just as nice to me, scared me, and I reached with the police. And he said, well, Miss Campbell, we did what we could. And I said, what? He said, we did what we could. And that time, one of the nurses came out and uh, told her he passed. And how old was he? I was 40-something, I don't know. So you've been a widow for lots of years. Yeah. So uh, he left just like that, you know. And was it a stroke or a uh, heart attack? Like they didn't that? tell me anything. They just told me, Dr. Green just said, well, he left. But I believe it was a heart attack. Uh, mm -hmm. But that's just me. Because they didn't tell me anything. So he went pretty quickly. He didn't, quickly. He didn't suffer much. That's no, he didn't suffer much, no. Mm -hmm. Because from here over there, and then when we got there, he was gone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he didn't suffer much. Mm -hmm. But that's the biggest blow I've ever had. <laughs> you are a young widow. Yes, yes, yes. It was a long, long ago. And then you know, when my dad got killed, it was three of us at home with Josephine, you know. Where you did the two of the two. The boy, the big one on this end and the boy, we had this one boy. And uh, my daddy told me, he said, oh, now we'll be, he was working in Iraq here. And he said, I'll be back this weekend. Go be sure and get everything packed up now. And we said, okay. Because we just screaming and praying myself. And we was in the house to know he had to do everything. But we were my children. <clears throat> and uh, that morning, about nine o'clock, my cousin came over there and she said, uh, she was just nice, talking to us, and she said, well, I just came to tell you all that to uh, her. She called him Uncle Buck. Uncle Buck got killed last night. And there we was, three children, with no home, and no, no mama, no daddy. It was sad. And you were just nine years old. Yeah. Yeah. Were you the youngest or of the family? You were the youngest girl? Uh-huh. The boy was a baby. So what happened then, this son came in. Uh, I stayed down there with the aunt for a few, just a little while. And this aunt lived in Columbia. And she came in and got me. 
and the older sister came down and brought Ray back up here. Because we was, we was outdoors, man. And, and one sister went with another, her sister Rebecca. And they just kept us in until we rolled up. Were you ever able, to, did you have opportunities to get together as, as you were growing up as children? I mean, I know you couldn't after live together. We, after we grew up, if we, we were never together because from here they come down there and then the one that had the other sister, Josephine, she, she lived in you know, Alabama someplace down there in Georgia. Mm -hmm. So we never did get together all together then. And the only time we got together was when we were, uh, after we grew up. And my sister, one day, one day of stage down there, and the other one, my carrier, you know, someplace else, and they would come, and but we never did. And just being and Fred, being Fred, we never did get together until we got grown. Not the oh, not the same time, you know. It'd be different times we'd get together. Are you the only one still living? Only one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My brother got killed in a car wreck, just like my daddy oh did. My. Uh -huh. yes. About two, maybe he's dead two years now, been going two years. He mm -hmm. lived in Manning, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. I was someplace. But, but he would come up often, and I'd go see him. And uh, my aunt, he called, uh, somebody called and told them that he got in here. And you never know. Mm -hmm. You never know. Because which was me and him and that was wrong. Just I mean he now he lived in New York when he was uh, no, he lived in Manning and one sister was in New York. And so I would go to Manning and then we'd go to New York and we'd get together like that. But uh, we never was together, just, you know. Well, you're a strong lady. Oof. Yes. You've survived so much. Yes. And you've come out being such a wonderful person. Right? Yes, you really are. You're to be admired. You've had a lot of adversity in your yes. life, and you've uh, exactly. you've certainly given back yeah. to your community. It's obvious with all the plaques and all the recognition that you have received that yes. Regardless of your adversity, you've always given back to the community, and that says an awful lot about a person. Well, I love people. <laughs> <laughs> well, and usually if you love people, they love you back. You yes. know, and that's, that's a good thing. Because you, I always felt like um, if I didn't have, when I just had, if it was just, when after my sister died, I felt like, well, it's me and my brother, and we could get together. But when my brother got killed, I just felt alone. And I still do sometimes, you know. Mm -hmm. And then I try to do as much as I can. I get just as busy as I can to keep from thinking about it. It also keeps but, you yeah. young. Well, <laughs> I don't know. Are, are you the oldest person in your church? Yes. Well, I, I have an aunt. She's 96, mm -hmm. my man. And I'm the next oldest. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I left John Chapman. I I worked just as hard as I taught Sunday school. And uh, I worked as president of the Mission Circle for years. And I worked as president for the uh, Alexander Missionary Baptist Union for six years. I've been just busy, you know. I keep myself busy, and I work for the senior citizens of, uh, as I say, more than in different places. And I don't know why they made me the president of that because I was at home. And when I went to, to uh, when we had the meeting, they said, uh, "You're the president." I said, "I don't want to be no president." They said, "You're already there." So, <laughs> so Dr. Martin was working this then and we go to Raleigh and, and this is the Cancer Society, is that yes. what you're talking mm -hmm. about? Cancer Society, yeah. And the church, I was president of the Alexander Missionary Baptist Women's Auxiliary 
for five years. They just won't let me get, go, you know. <laughs> and I'm always busy. As long as you stay busy, if you go to church and you trust in the Lord, nothing is impossible. You can do anything that's right that you want to do. And see, I, I learned to depend on the Lord when I was young because uh, I would miss my dad, my, my mom and daddy, because I didn't have one. The other children would say sometimes, yes, that's my mama. And now that, that gets you. And I know there wasn't my mama. And neither my daddy. You're talking about the, the aunts and uncles you lived with. Yes, uh, they had I children. guess the children were somewhat jealous uh, of, of their having to share attention. With me, yeah, because they were saying, that's not your home. This is not your house. Oh. And then there I would be, you know. But I've always learned, I don't know why, I didn't know how to pray. You know, like we pray now. But when they would, uh, I would get so upset. I would just talk to the Lord and I said, I would say, now Lord, you promised I'd go to church and hear the preacher. <laughs> Preach the same thing you want to ask for it. You know, ask the Lord for it. I said, now, Lord, you promised that you would take care of us. You promised that you'd be a mother, and you promised you'd be a father, and you promised this, and you promised that. I really got tired from Because <laughs> every time they would do something or say something, I'd get up to myself, and I would tell the Lord what he promised me. And sure enough, everything, since that I had a home, I've never been home, I've never been outdoors. Since then, I've always had clothes to wear, and I've always had friends grow both white and black. I just have friends, you know, because I, oh, it's say, well, you cut up. I said, well, it's no different. I said, you cut, if you cut that to uh, my white friend, I said, you cut me. I said, you get a piece of paper and let the blood, you know, drop on that paper. I said, now you tell me what was this the black paper? <laughs> <laughs> I said, tell me is this, if this is the black blood or the white blood. I said, now which is which? And they said, I don't know. I said, well, that's what I know. You, a lot of stuff you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, a lot of stuff, you know. You have to tell people, because uh, some people just, I don't know, they're just not like me. <laughs> because I love everybody, and I do unto others as I would have them do unto me, you know. I teach Sunday school, I over uh, in the Mason Circle, I work in BTU, I just work. I've got to keep busy, because if I don't keep busy, you see, I have too much to worry about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I have nobody to talk to, you know, when you don't have a, a sister or a brother and have talked to somebody else and that and that makes you don't talk you just talk to God. And and he will make a way. My children both of them are nice to me. Well you're an inspiration. You oh. really are. Uh and uh we so thank you for letting us come and, and interview you and telling us your stories. You ladies have any other questions? No, I'm just so glad to have had a chance to hear your stories and yes. know about what a um, wonderful life you've lived. Yes, thank you. Thank well, you so really much. It wasn't much because I couldn't remember too much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, you, you remembered a lot. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah.